Now for our story. Kit Mead stood by the telephone in her father's house. She'd just had an upsetting conversation with Paul Cromwell, the man who helped her gain possession of Lisa Fenner's baby son. Previously, she'd promised to divorce Bill Mead, had encouraged Cromwell to think she was going to marry him. It was almost 9.30 at night, and Paul, according to the agreement he'd made with Kit a few hours before, should have been aboard a train bound for Chicago. Instead, he telephoned from the Brown Palace Hotel in Wakefield to inform Kit that he decided not to leave, had demanded that she come to see him at once for an important talk. Paul's angry tone had been frightening. Something had happened since this afternoon, something that's changed Paul's attitude. And Kit trembled when she realized what it might have been. Perhaps Paul had discovered the truth, that she deceived him. It was a very nervous young woman who, some 20 minutes later, knocked on the door of Paul's suite at the hotel. However, she tried to appear composed, for Kit was much too wise to reveal her inward fear. Besides, she thought as she heard Paul's footsteps approaching the door, it might be possible to bluff through again. Yes, she'd be as charming as she knew how to be. Hello, darling. Here I am. Yes, Kit. Come in. Well, Paul, this is quite a palatial setup, especially for Wakefield. It's the bridal suite. All they had. <laughs> oh, the bridal suite. Yes, it's a good joke, isn't it? A bridal suite for me is something like a steak dinner for a man with stomach poisoning. Oh, goodness. What an unpleasant comparison. And I assure you, I haven't the faintest idea of what you mean. It's an unpleasant situation, Kit. And I think you do know what I mean. I know you mean to be disagreeable. And perhaps you have a right to. Well, I'm sorry about this afternoon. Frankly, after thinking it over, I'm, I'm awfully glad you decided to stay. It'll be fun. We can amuse ourselves some way. Perhaps take drives in the country. It's beautiful this time of the year. It'll be like old times. Like old times, Kit? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. Quite. Oh? Are you worrying about Bill? Paul, I, I shouldn't have frightened you this afternoon with my chatter. It was just that I was rather nervous. Your sudden arrival in town after months of separation. <laughs> I'm afraid I had behaved like a schoolgirl. I wouldn't say that, Kit. I think you behaved quite consistently under the circumstances. Darling, I'm glad you understand. It's been so long since we were together. It, uh, it rather went to my head. Did it really, kid? Well, I'm so flattered. Paul. Paul, let's forget this afternoon. I think I'll have a drink. Are you interested? No, thank you. Yes. Yes, on second thought, I think I would like one. After all, this is sort of a celebration, isn't it? A celebration? Uh, well, that depends. Here you are. Yes, I suppose it is a celebration. If you could call a wake a celebration. A wake? Oh, Paul, cheer up. I'd call it a reunion. You would, eh? Personally, I'd say it was more like hail and farewell. Uh, shall we sit down? Go ahead if you like. I think I'll stand. Paul, I know you asked me down for some reason. I'm very curious. Of course, you haven't the slightest idea, have you? No. Well, how could I? I thought we settled everything very nicely when we talked this afternoon. Yes, I suppose you did, Kit. At least I imagine you hoped we'd settled things to your satisfaction. But, Paul, why do you say my satisfaction? We both talked it over, decided what was best. Frankly, I'm somewhat at a loss. You've behaved so oddly ever since I came in. I wish you'd say whatever you have on your mind. That's quite a large order. Well, try, darling. I'm sure I'll be able to follow you. Is it that you've had some new idea? Some idea which will help us get things settled? Yes. That's it exactly, Kit. I've had a new idea. Oh, wonderful, Paul. Tell me about it. It occurred to me, Kit, that I might be able to help you. I know how eager you've been to get the divorce, and if Bill's acting difficult, there may be something I can do. Something... You could do, Paul? Yes, you know, uh, to bring things to a conclusion right away. Well, naturally, there's nothing I'd like better. You know that. Of course, darling, I do know it. That's why I thought if I talked to Bill, told him the child isn't his, explained the whole story... Tell Bill what? Certainly. 
Don't you see how much better it would be? You wouldn't have to worry then about Bill's wanting to preserve the marriage. But, but that's insane, Paul. Good heavens, don't you see what... You're would... darn right I do, you little hypocrite. Paul, what are you... Look, Kip, the game's over. I don't know what you're talking about. You, you summon me down here and then you... No, Kip. It's too late for those tactics. You've used that little trick of putting me on the defensive for the last time. <laughs> what a fool I've been. It's all so obvious now. You really played me for a fall guy, didn't you? Paul Cromwell, I'm fed up with this cat and mouse method you've been using ever since I arrived. If you think you've been treated unfairly, why didn't you tell me so without all these dramatics? You know very well how I hate scenes. You hate scenes? <laughs> That's good, Kit. That's very good. It's the truth and you know it. Now say what you have in your mind and let me go. I've had a tiring day. Apparently you've run into someone who's told you some silly tale. You're right. I did run into someone. Someone who told me the truth. It was quite a shock. Indeed. And what was this revelation that put you into such a dither? I got the answer to something which has been puzzling me for a long time. I knew you wanted Lisa's baby kit, but I never knew why you wanted him. Now I do. All this nonsense about something you had to prove in Wakefield. All the lies you told me. The simple truth is that you wanted that child because you hoped it would patch up your marriage to Bill Mead. You never intended to marry me. And to think that I fell for it, I helped you. Yes. Yes, you did help me. You helped me while you were helping yourself. You seem to forget how anxious you were to get Lisa out of your hair. How worried you were about that. You were so anxious to protect yourself from any possible scandals. Your old family pride and so on. Wait a minute, Chip. The point is, I kept my bargain with you and you let me down. And you're basing this belief on some gossip you picked up here in Wakefield. You'd rather believe some malicious story you've heard than take my word. The person who told me the truth wasn't being malicious, just truthful. I suppose you ran into Bill. He gave you his side. No. Well, then, who was it? It doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is I've found out about the game you've been playing. No, it's so like you, Paul, to keep harping on what I've done and ignore the part you had in the thing yourself. Oh, no, I'm laying no claim to innocence. I admit my record doesn't look pretty. We're both a couple of scoundrels. However, I'm still much closer to decency than you are, Kit. There might be a difference of opinion as to that. I doubt it. A bargain is a bargain. What about the bargain you made with Lisa? Did you ever have any intention of keeping it? If you're talking about honor among thieves, Paul, your accusations don't hold water. At least I've managed to conceal my intentions. The whole town knows what you're up to. That you've said you'd contest need suit for divorce. All right, Paul. Assuming all that, what do you propose to do about it? It would serve you right if I told the whole sordid story. Let the town know that Ben Calvert's daughter practically stole another woman's child, palmed him off as her own. You wouldn't dare do that. Because if you did, you'd have to expose yourself. You're in this thing up to your neck, too. It might be worth it. Just to see you squirm. But you're right, kid. I wouldn't think to such a method. It's more in your style. I have a much better idea. I can imagine. Well, Paul, it's wonderful to see how loyal you are. How this love you had for me survived the crisis. Surely you didn't think I'd accept all this without a word. Kit, my love was genuine and real, unfortunately. However, the reverse is just as true now, and in the same proportions. I presume you're saying you hate me. That's a weak word, but that's the general idea. All right, so you hate me. What can you do about it? That, my sweet, is something you'll find out very soon. As she drove back to her father's house, Kit wondered fearfully what Paul was going to do. What could he do unless he exposed himself? At the moment, the logical answer didn't occur to her. But Paul was wondering what Lisa Fenner's reaction would be if she knew that the child she already regretted handing over to Kit had become the center of an ugly tug of war between man and wife. That the baby she'd given up in order to ensure it's having a perfect home was destined to have anything but a normal life, regardless of which person won custody of him. <laughs>